Kesha was once one of this channel's favorite punching bags, up there with Flo Rida, Iggy Azalea, and perhaps ironically, Chris Brown. But what happened to Kesha? Well, for some channels, that would be the subject of a two-hour amateur documentary that you'd half listen to in the background while you vacuumed or played video games, with 12 double ad breaks throughout it. Well, let's see if we can't recap this for you in two minutes with no interruptions. Kesha became embroiled in a lawsuit with Sony and her producer, Dr. Luke, whom she accused of welcoming her to the industry Bill Cosby style, as well as being abusive throughout her career. Dr. Luke filed a countersuit, saying this was all bullshit, that Kesha was slandering him because she wanted out of her contract. Around the same time, stories get dug up about Kesha bragging that she used to make men take their pants off when they got on her tour bus, and she would take Polaroids of them, which she wanted to include in a book, but her publisher advised against that for, you know, common sense reasons? Maybe not create a document of your own acts of sexual harassment? So Kesha and Dr. Luke go back and forth, Kesha claims Dr. Luke also Weinsteined Katy Perry, adding to the defamation lawsuit because Katy Perry denies that and is now pissed that Kesha would bring her into it, but also felt Dr. Luke was using her, Katy, as a pawn now. The whole thing is really bizarre. At one point, Kim Petras defends Dr. Luke, saying she'd never work with someone who abuses women, and people are like, well, maybe only abuses certain types of women. Like, you know, people who started out as one. And I think our two minutes are up, but the lawsuit was settled last year, with Dr. Luke saying he never did anything, and Kesha saying she doesn't remember every detail, but is happy to move on. So, now that that's all over, what's she been doing with her freedom? Well, I think we can only answer that with a little tweeting rainbow. Over the last few years, we haven't seen a lot of these sort of unhinged celebrities like we used to, going on social media and just tweeting random thoughts. Like in 2016, when Azalea Banks posted a video of herself supposedly cleaning up the closet where she sacrifices chickens. Or, a little tamer, when Jaden Smith would tweet things like, chemtrails, nothing else, or, no pain, no gain, young Kurt Cobain. I guess Kesha's been so busy with her lawsuit, she didn't realize eight years have passed. Which is good for us. We ring in the new year with this post. Fashion's fun until you have to pee. Mirror selfie of her in what appears to be a one-piece bathing suit with sleeves. Well, if you like pee tweets, you're in for a treat. Huh? Huh? A few days later, she says, Asking for a friend, what do you do if the overall strap got peed on, theoretically? So, she was wearing overalls, and the strap fell in the toilet or on the ground and got piss on it. Kesha's so relatable. She's just like you. What, you've never pissed on your own clothes? Well, la-dee-da, good for you, your majesty. If you're trying to get a hold of me, I'm currently in the forest learning how to make owl sounds and getting my fucking power back. I mean, her hooting for three minutes would probably have been better than we are who we are, but if this doesn't make her look crazy enough, then she starts Britney posting. We get this one of her from the side. Hair's wet like maybe she just got out of a shower, holding a towel over any bits that might get the photo taken down. Although on Twitter, or X, I'm pretty sure you can literally now just post porn and nothing happens. This is followed up with one of her naked laying on a body pillow, holding an accordion. Oh, please tell me there's going to be some polka on her next album. That's what Kesha's music needed. An instrument more annoying than her voice. March 1st, she posts a picture of herself wearing a bikini while on a motorcycle titled, Happy Birthday to Me. That seems wildly unsafe, riding a motorcycle without some sort of protective gear on. Oh, oh, wait, no, she's got running shoes on. Never mind, I'm sure that's fine. And then we get this one. Hard to be Kesha in a Hailey Bieber world, but somebody's got to do it. Her standing behind a bar, holding a liquor bottle and a can of something in front of her bare tits. I don't know about owl sounds, but I guess she was doing something in the woods with Hooters. I wondered if maybe this was a play on something Hailey Bieber posted, so I checked her Instagram, 
I couldn't find anything even remotely close. Saw this bizarre ad where a makeup company collaborated with Krispy Kreme Donuts and Justin's wife is shilling both. But no collaborations between tits and booze. But I brought up Britney and titled this video as a reference to my video about Britney from last year because when she did this exact same thing, all her fans were like, oh, there's definitely something wrong with her. She's being controlled or she's not mentally stable. Who would do these things? They're all worried or pretended to worry. All these shitty news outlets wrote articles speculating whether or not she was OK. I looked. Best I can find is Rolling Stone wrote an article titled Kesha Strips Down to Nothing to Tease New Music. <laughs> Does no one care about Kesha? Because, I mean, there's definitely something wrong with her. She's resorted to playing Fortnite, for Christ's sake. We get a series of tweets where she asks, How do I get Fortnite? I guess it took her a day to figure it out. The next day, she says, Never played a video game before in my life, but ready... Then, a picture of her starting a game. Oh my god, I'm falling! Then, she's trying to figure out the build mechanics. Should I build a studio here? And then, about four minutes later, a screenshot of her being shot, simply captioned, OMG! All of those took place in the span of 15 minutes. Then, that was it. Back to posting things like her wearing a low-cut dress to the nearest gas station to buy a Coke. I don't know, is this just the eccentric behavior of a 37-year-old woman who lost nearly 20 years of her life to an industry that chewed her up and spit her out, now making up for lost time? Or, more cynically, an attempt to market upcoming new music to a fan base who she knows supported her when she was a crazy 20-something pop bimbo covered in glitter talking about getting dudes to take their dicks out behind a jukebox that stopped buying her albums when she tried to get introspective and deep. She put out an album last year, it peaked at number 168 on the Billboard 200. It was outsold that week by a 30-year-old Metallica album, an 8-year-old Disney soundtrack in which a pro wrestler sings, a guy who died 5 years ago, a Little Wayne album that came out the year before she had her first hit, and a Chris Brown album. Another woman beat by Chris. But the point I was making is, whether it's a cry for attention, or target marketing, it's not working very well. One news outlet wrote about it, and it's the one read by 50 to 60 year old dudes. Oh, the 100 best Beatles solo songs. Oh, I can't wait to read that. Huh. Keisha is getting naked? Well, I don't really know who that is, but I suppose I could take a look. <laughs> But there is a happy ending here. Although we never did hear the terms of that settlement, Kesha is apparently out from under the thumb of Sony and Dr. Luke. On March 6, she wrote, First day I've owned my voice in 19 years. Welcome. And yes, despite several minutes of dunking on her Twitter timeline, I'm happy for her. No, I am. I don't want any entertainer to be forced to create something they really don't want to create for mega corporations who only care about money, who trick naive, starry-eyed, hopeful young women and men into signing bullshit contracts, telling them, well, you could take this to an entertainment lawyer, but we might change our minds tomorrow. A lot of other talent we're looking at. Get them to sign, hand them a bunch of money, and then go, ha ha, you didn't read the fine print. That's a loan. Oh, you spent it already? Well, you have to earn that money back. And then you have to make five more albums for us. And we can end this contract whenever we want. But you can't. She signed that contract when she was 18 and was locked into it until she was 37. That is insane. I don't wish that on anyone. I said it years ago and I'll say it again. I'm an asshole. I'm not a fucking asshole. Plus, that's no fun. For me. It means there's an excuse. Kesha can say that all that music she put out before, that I and other real critics shit on, well, it was bad because it was made by committee. She didn't come up with brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack. It wasn't her idea to team up with 303. She didn't want her voice auto-tuned. That was Sony. That was Dr. Luke. But now, the next song she makes, that's all Kesha. No dollar sign, no Dr. Luke, no Sony. 
So, no pressure, Kesher. But if your next song is the drizzling shits topping a mayonnaise sundae, well, that's all on you. You'll have to live with serving that to the world and calling it ice cream.